Hi everyone. Um, I hope we're alive. <laughs> I'm um, Alexandra. I'm a Run It Once coach and a mid stakes cash game player. And this is my friend and hello coach Paul. And today we are going to run a hand review stream. There's no particular topic and these are hands that someone in our Discord community sent us. If you are interested to join that, you can find the link in the Discord. In the chat. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm Alex sorry, I'm really tired today. <laughs> Um, Paul, anything to say about yourself or? No, I think you covered everything. I think let's jump into some hands. Yeah, before we do that, uh, let's just remind everybody there's a discount available during the stream um, for the Run It Once Essential where we both coach. And yeah, Paul is going to link that in the, in the chat as well. You need to use the code stream, I think. And you'll get 50% uh, yeah. off a social. Okay. Okay, then let's jump into some hands. Um, I'm not sure if there's, I don't know, any thought process or reads on these players. Do you, did you receive anything like that? Uh, no, these were just a few hands that got sent over and uh, we played down to the river, so we should hopefully just get some, some spots to look at. All right, so here we open Jack 3 suited on the small blind. I think this is quite bottom range of opening red, pretty much. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think this is probably stone cold bottom of our opening range. All right, and we get called by Villain 1, which we don't really know much about. We get a flop of 6 deuce 5. Um, here I think I would just range check against most people. Although I think you could implement some bats if you if you really wanted to. Um, I think in most ranges or charts if you like respect them obviously depends on the rake uh, too. But I think mostly 3-4 is not really an open and we also miss this board by quite a lot. Um, Villain also has some combos that are exclusive to him and we shouldn't really have, like I said, 3, 4, 6 deuce, maybe uh, 5 deuce. So yeah, we're not really doing great on this board. That being said, we can implement some low frequency batting if we wanted to. I think I would just simplify it to a range check. Um, what about you, Paul? Yeah, on this sort of board, um, Villain is going to connect with this a bit more than us. Um, I, I think if our hero here is opening Jack-3 suited, he's probably also going to be opening 4-3 suited. Um, I think in the same, it, in 500 and L chats, so those would both be opens. Uh, maybe not at, say, 50 and L chats. Um, so I think he will have a bit of connectivity to this board, as well as, you know, over pairs and things. But yeah, I would personally just simplify to uh, range check in this spot and then... Um, Look to look to find some check races with, uh, as long as uh, uh, along with my calls. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Also, I think people tend to do some stabbing mistakes. From what I've seen in my own study in regards to pool analysis, um, aggressive or like decent opponents tend to slightly overstab this board. So because of that, you know, just going for really aggressive check races could work really well. Um, we're facing. Uh, one third? No, I think this is a quarter, right? Yeah, something yeah, like almost, that. It's almost a third. Almost a third. 30% <laughs> <laughs> yeah. stab. Uh, and yeah, I think this go can, this hand could go either way between check raising and check calling, but I think we do actually prefer um, check calling. And I think we mostly want to check raise, you know, backdoor flash draws with a club and maybe get shots to the four, but yeah, I think this end will probably be a mix with more check calling. What's your thoughts? Yeah, I think it's uh, I think it's close. I think either option is going to be fine. Uh, one one benefit of obviously check racing some of these jack three, jack four is that you get to uh, just fold out some hands that are currently better in villain's range, but um, can't withstand the check race. So those queen, king, a side type of hands. So yeah, I think either is fine. 
and we do go for a chuck raise um and this is quite a big chuck raise size i would say which you know i think it's fine to chuck raise big here but we need to be aware that the bigger we chuck raise the less we can do it in frequency and that means the more careful we need to be with our combo selection so i think if we go this size we probably don't chuck raise this hand all that often but like this is this is fine we get a call and now the turn varies to a five um what's your thoughts on this turn? um once filling calls i think they're obviously going to have much more 5x. I think a lot of their 5x can stab and, and will obviously be calling um, a check raise. Uh, however, for us, most of our check raises are going to be built around our overpairs. So I think in this situation now, we would have to be a bit careful with our barreling frequency because whilst we will still want to continue to bet with some overpairs, I don't think all of them are going to want to um, continue betting all the time. Uh, and, that, and that is just due to the fact that I think this five is is so so bad for us. It's not as if we're going to be you know check raising four five uh, seven five all that often, but villain is going to be calling you know those type of hands as well as you know ace five king five suited as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I agree with you. This is definitely not the greatest card for us. That means we should be quite careful. Um, also, I'm not sure like now that the five pairs. I, I don't think there's as many offsuit combos with the five so in terms of percentages of his range i don't think a five is going to be uh, you know a very big part of his range but definitely much bigger than ours and yes that will reduce our batting frequency with this particular hand um yeah when when our batting frequency reduces, we I think we need to be quite careful while we continue it. And on the flop, we have so many options of gut shots plus back doors and, you know, flash draws and whatnot that could raise here. And I, I think I would just give up this hand. The reason being, I, I think it does block some autofold. So back door flash draws that are going to stop on the flop and then autofold on the turn. It doesn't really block many 5x, although Jack 5, 3 5 could be in his range. But yeah, I think we have much better bluffs to pick from. So this one I'd probably just give up. Um, what do you think? Yeah, I think just highlighting now we potentially have a lot of bluffs to continue with here and, and not huge amounts of value that wants to end up going for three streets, especially on a, um, a flush draw board as well. Um, so all of your overpairs without a club are probably not going to be wanting to pile in many here, um, just because you know there's going to be around a quarter of runouts that uh, seriously devalue th those overpairs. Um, and yeah, I just agree with you in that. I think I might choose some of my other buffs to continue here with. I think even something like seven, seven, eight is just a better continue just because you're going to block that 5x um, a lot more. Uh, you know, villain villain should have eight five and seven five suited in their range. Um, and Dean C um, asked in the chat, do they have any donk bets with five x after a check raise? Um, in this situation, it's small blind versus big blind, so um, he hasn't got a possibility to uh, donk because um, mm -hmm. we're first to act. Yeah. Yeah, um, exactly. One thing that I wanted to add here is we also want to think of our outs, right? Because seven eight, yeah, it does block five x, maybe a bit better. Older jack three, jack five could also be in his range. Maybe those don't stab as often. But also when we have seven eight, we have way better outs to improve. Because here, even if we hit a four, well, we're not that happy. But at least with seven eight, we're always drawing to the to the nut straight. Even though like five pairing, there are some full houses available. It's still you know much better hand to continue here. Yeah, for sure. That's a good point. Okay, we see our hero going for a bet. Which, yeah, I think I think just giving this up is a bit better, you know, just remember we don't always have to win every pot and sometimes it's fine to give some hands up. You know, betting is only good if it is higher EV than checking um, and sometimes it's going to be minus EV, which I think might be the case here. Yeah, one thing I just want to add to that as well is that you, you see a lot of people get into this spot and then they think, um, you know, I don't want to give up with Jack three. I have no showdown. I can't. I can't win. Um, but there, there's there's a bunch of rivers you actually 
you know potentially could win win on. Um, so villain's going to have some two uh, X in his range. You know, ace two suited, king two, queen two suited. Um, you know, we could bink a three or a jack on the river. Um, even if they do have those pocket sevens, pocket eights, we can still bink a jack on the river. So it's not as if when we check this this turn, we just always lose because um, sometimes turn goes check check and and we get to realize some of our equity as well. Yeah, exactly. Or we can bluff river and still get folds from flash draw and whatnot, flash draws and whatnot. So yeah. Or we can <laughs> get there. <laughs> Um, right, I think, yeah, I'm thinking what size we want to pick here, I'm not really sure, I think we should also implement some, some small sizes on this 4 to straight, but yeah, I'm also thinking what's the worst hand we can bat for value. And this spot being blind versus blind, I think we can still value bat quite thin. And due to that, we probably want to implement some small sizes. Um, in terms of full houses, I think big blind probably has more of those. And maybe be a net advantage here. So I imagine we don't really want to have really big sizes. But yeah, it would be interesting to see... Um, what sizing scheme a solver likes here on the river? I'm not entirely sure. Um, what's your thoughts? Um, yeah, I, I think I I agree with you in that. I think block is probably going to be our main size in here, just because, as you, as as we said, most of our range is going to be well, a lo a big portion of our range is going to be over pairs, and I don't think they necessarily want to be putting in much money now. Um, I think this is going to be a spot where we just have a, a quite a high check frequency and then maybe block. But yeah, maybe we could have a look at this in GTO Wizards. Yeah, yeah, that would be interesting. Um, this, uh, this, I this agree. A, I was just going to say, this is the sort of situation where, like, we are happy we made our hand, but we still lose to, like, 16 combos potentially of 7 8, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. As, as, as well as any. Um, Full houses, so it's not it's not a spot we want to be piling in the money for sure. Well, we were saying about you know wanting wanting to draw to the net at least. Um, yeah, I agree. It's probably going to be a very high checking frequency. I don't think it's going to be a range check, but actually, I think it might be quite close to that. Uh, do you see blind versus blind single braced pot with a random big blind range? These initial range is very tight. Uh, Stu Unger says block size and then call off a shove or raise on the river. Um, I'd be I'd be very apprehensive about calling off yeah. the jam. I think we've filtered big blinds range to continue a, a mostly strong hands. Um, and yeah, most most people in in a lot of pools have just uh, have not got enough bluffs in them, especially on a board like this. It's just hard to have a lot of bluffs as well. So yeah, I would be very careful about calling off so the six is a spade yeah exactly i completely agree with you i think you know if you face a shove there is probably one of the most under bluffed spots in poker so yeah i i, I would probably just can we yeah. um can we just can we just node lock a, a bit of jack uh, three in our range yes of course Um, Perfect. I assume um, the sim is not going to be that close to reality, considering that our um, hero is opening this. Maybe, as you said, he's opening way wider. But yeah, let's not worry about that now. Uh, I'm not sure if he range checks or not. So for the sake of this, I'm just gonna leave it like this. You see very high batting frequency from um, Pillen. Not sure if this will make much difference, but I think it's going to increase it a little bit. And also, if you know we we bat slightly lower, um, I think our va our calling threshold is also going to go down. Okay, so. 
we had Jack 3, not Queen 3. Yeah, I was just looking at backdoors. Apparently, they like raising more than flush draws. And this is actually a pure raise. I think this is because it performs so terrible as a call and cannot really face multiple streets aggression. So probably when we have a hand like this, we just want to take the pot down now and, you know, not take having... A, take initiative and, and be able to put in money. That's, that's good for us as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, but we do prefer raising a 4x. And that's why here you see raises even without Spectre flash draws or flash draws. Um, okay, go for a raise then. Oh yeah, we need to check I, 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 I don't, I, Yeah, I don't, I don't think we need to uh, node lock everything. No, I didn't want to node lock it. I um, forgot we we check raised. I thought we checkled. Okay. And the turn was a five of diamonds. And you see now quite a low batting frequency, but our over pairs are still definitely worth the bat. Is it just our over pairs with a club? Because that's what I imagined. No. They do have... Have a look at nines as well. Yeah, not necessarily. Okay. I thought it might have been... Um you know, a bigger advantage to have a club in our hands just because we're going to face a, a club on the river uh, less often when we have a club in our hand. And so those overpairs would be uh, stronger with a club, but I guess it does make a huge difference. Yeah, it doesn't really make a huge difference. They are a bit stronger with the club, I guess, some of them. But on the other hand, yeah, I think what's happening here is that when you have over pairs on a random like this, you kind of want him to have clubs and, you know, get called by clubs, especially if they don't have an over card to your over pair. So, you know, when you don't have clubs, I guess there's more hands to call you. Um, and you see here, it's much better not to have a backdoor flash draw because, as I said before, it, it blocks out of holes. Sorry, a backdoor flash draw. So, yeah, this, you see, is a pure check, but the other combos are batting. Although it's not, like, if you check the EV, it's not actually bad to, uh, or super, you know, doesn't lose EV to bat this one. Yeah, well, I, what's interesting there, uh, on that turn, just before we go off it, is that um, this 7-8 off is supposed to be folding on this turn. I'm not sure when we bet the size we bet in game. I, I'm, I don't think that ha really happens. Um, which would make, which which is just something to keep in mind when we see this river for, you know, because the solver is going to, um, it's going to think that this, this four isn't as bad as it is probably in reality. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's quite a good point, actually. Okay, so here, as you see, you, we do use a very small... What? Nothing, I was just saying block, as we said, just using the block size in. Yeah, um, but what's interesting is that... You know, all of these are still worth a bat because, you know, range is blind versus blind are so wide and he's probably supposed to call a lot of bluff catchers and worse hands, as you see, like 6x is mostly a call. So, yeah, I think in practice people really, really butcher this spot. I don't think um, they find these really, really thin value bats. And I also doubt people are finding yeah. these very wide calls. Like Ace High is calling here. Quite yeah, often. I don't think I don't think this sim becomes reality on the river for imposition. Um, Ever no. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, yeah, that was interesting that we saw um, the block size in as we said on the river, and then loads of checking as well. Let me just check the chat. So. Um, Spencer Crest said, this looks great, but I'd be interested in the four, four of clubs version. If we could just put the four of clubs on the river and just see the difference. And then Dean also asked, do they bet all of their seven, eight on flop? Uh, uh, it's a solver, so it does, I think it did a bunch, but it wasn't full frequency. It, it mixed. <laughs> yeah, for sure, no. 
it's not full frequency. And here we see when the Four of Clubs rolls on the river. We now bet at a much, much lower frequency. And now these are weighted into value, but you see how this changes. Um, and also, we are now also allowed to have a bit of all-in bets because now we're also going to have some nutty hands that want to go for sacks, meaning flashes, which wasn't really the case, or we didn't really have the advantage in full houses or so on uh, on the other one. So, yeah. Yeah, that, that's cool. Should we go next hand then? Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> Spencer, Spencer Crest was not interested in the four of clubs on the river. He was interested in four cards. <laughs> he wanted to see some piano action. <laughs> we can, uh, we'll speak to some people that run it once. They may be able to get some guys to run some uh, uh, piano streams like this as well. well. We'll let you know in the um, run it once discord if you join that. Yeah, that would be quite cool. I would have uh, something to learn. I like to learn PLO. Just get lazy about it. Um, right, so here we face an MP open and B3 bet with A4 suited, I think. In, in, in that last hand, um, can we just see what Hero did? I, I missed the action on the river. Oh. Did he... I'm wondering what size he chose. Okay, yeah, he went for the jam. Yeah, I don't, don't think jams. Jams very good because of, because of this right and again like we said that seven eight call in or probably all the time on the turn yeah yeah and i think like after seeing the solver i think actually going like so i'm not saying you know we should check raise and barrel the turn with this on this board very often but i think this is the kind of spot where if we do Barrel the turn, I think we should probably bluff everything on the river that doesn't have showdown value. Like, no way he's um, going to hit that defending frequency. Yeah, for sure, for sure. That's a good point. Okay. But not for a jump side. <laughs> uh, we, we're still on the wizard. Okay, so... Uh, yeah. Thanks, thanks for that. I'm still learning this, uh, no wrong. But yeah, um, just just quickly show just quickly show them the last hand because obviously we talked about it, but they didn't get to see it. Um, so yeah, we went for a, we went for a jam. Uh, well, hero went for a jam on the river and, and got, called. Uh, got called by seven eight off. Oh, okay, so here we threw about a for city the gas the MP which is a bit loose. I think this might happen low frequency, but for sure not something you have to do. It's nice to see though, because uh, at 10 and L, a lot of a lot of heroes and I'll find in these three bets. And um, yeah, I actually like this. Yeah, I agree. I like it too. And there's also the point that most villains as in position don't find close to enough four bets here as a bluff, maybe not this one as value. Because yeah, you should start through betting four betting hands like even ace jack suited sometimes, king ten suited, king jack suited, and yeah, people just tend to uh, blindly call those. Yeah, so we may over realize some equity. Yeah, exactly. Um here on this board I think against most of my opponents, I would just play quite a polar strategy. Um, but, you know, I, I wouldn't... I, I think this board is quite good for us. Like, really good for us. And I think you can basically do whatever. You could go implement a polar, more polar strategy with a big sizing. I think you could even range about half pot or 40%. Uh, yeah, I think whatever works here. What about you? Do you have any preference? No, I think think he, he is fine. Um, we see um, one third, but I think this is fine. It's just he shouldn't really fold much against this bat, so it could really work much really, really good uh, if they slightly overfold, which a lot of people do. 
<laughs> or it can not accomplish much if people defend correctly. Personally, um, for a range, but I would probably size up a bit to like 40% or half pot. But yeah, I think this is fine. Do you want to add anything? Uh, I, yeah, I'd just say I, I personally wouldn't use this size in really ever, just because the way I view this spot is my, my, my value hands are going to drive my betting range, and, and those are going to be primarily probably uh, you know King Jack or Queen Jack plus. And so those hands are, are much more incentivized to go for a bigger size in. So, um, yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't want to be in this spot with Ace Jack and just putting in you know a one third bet. So would like to see him size up. Mm. Yeah, I think actually against MP like Ace Jack, yeah, still against Standard the Gun. I think it's a bit trickier because he's going to have queens, even kings here sometimes. Um, and in theory, yeah, I think... yeah sorry, go on. Go on. no, no, sorry. In theory, if you look at the solver, I'm almost sure it's going to pick a big size, as you say. But I think exploitatively at 10 and L against most people, uh, this will like way overperform a solver EV. So yeah, I think it's fine to implement as a strategy, especially if you're not comfortable with with mixed strategies. I think it's it's something that will will just work well. Well, if you're if you're um, also if you're just planning on uh, getting out of a pool quite quickly and playing really exploitatively, you could bet small with your weaker hands and just bet bigger with your stronger hands. And <laughs> people people are probably not going to notice, right? So, you know, let's just choose, choose the bigger size and we're ace jack. And but it's a bad habit, you know. It's not something we want to do as we move up the stakes. But yeah, I don't think uh, villains are going to be capable enough to notice or exploit you for doing it. Yeah, I agree. Just a moment. Right. Let's see what happens here. Um, we turn a flash draw. And I think in this spot, you're actually going to see a lot of overbath shove. Uh, I'm sure that's what you're going to see if we bet big around the flop, but now the SPR is quite high. Um, but still, like on this board, that's like really, really drawy. And I think almost for sure something like, like our over pairs are going to probably be really strong enough to go for a shove here. So yeah, I think we are probably going to implement the shelf size. What, what do you think? Would you use that or would you use smaller sizing with your range? I mean, not necessarily with this hand. Yeah, I think um, I, I agree with you. If we w would have went a touch bigger on flop, you know, if we bet half pot, I think queens here is just screaming to be shoved. Um, same same with kings probably, you know, and block in uh, some strong jack X and uh, villain can have, say, queens. Um, Lots of combo draws and pair plus draws. So yeah, I agree with you that probably shoving is is what is wanting to happen here. Um, but again, because because the stack pot ratio is a little bit off now, it comes a bit closer. It's still still nearly only two two x. Um, yeah, I I expect to see villain probably just just end up barreling here. Um, yeah, I agree. I'm. Sorry, hero. Yeah, I'm curious if we do use a shop size, if this hand would make sense to shop. Because, um, like, you, I, I'm not sure you get many better hands to fold, and also your equity is a bit like, yes, we have a flash draw, but we don't really have much else to go with it. But on the other hand, I don't think we have much showdown value, so. And it's also not a great. River bluff, I imagine. Yeah, I think this hand would would just mix. I'm not sure if it would ever shove. Would be interesting to to check that. What What do you think? Yeah, you quickly check if you like. Um. Well, maybe. what do you think? <laughs> if it's going to shove or not? But yeah, let's check that. Yeah, it may, it may end up just being the, the stronger ace X, maybe ace nine suited. Um, as you said, I don't know. It, it, it depends, right? Because we went small on flop, so like there's still a bunch of eight X to fold out of villain's range potentially. Um, can still get called by in queen of hearts. Um, 
Yeah, and we can we can actually fold hands like ace queen, ace king should be in his range sometimes. So yeah. due to those, I think yeah, I think I, I changed my mind. I think it's actually a good shot. Um, I I don't find this accurate. I don't think anyone three bets this to be honest. So I'm just going to take them out. Board was oh we're not in GTO wizard. I don't think we are. Board was check eight three. And it's actually not as great for us as it would be in later positions. Actually not even close. Yeah, usually we, we get the advantage on these jack high boards because we mostly have a jack offsuit and king jack offsuit, which our opponent doesn't have. But in such early positions, this is probably not the case. And why don't. Yeah, actually, I think something is quite wrong with these ranges. Why we don't have a jack suited ever? Uh, I guess because you've taken these from GTO 500 and L ranges where they mix some calls, I think. No, it's 50 and L ranges, but I, yeah, oh, really? I, think, I think they still make some calls. Um, yeah, I don't think that's super accurate. Anyway, let's make it a third. Um, someone less you aquatic would like to see range versus range, if we can quickly show that, yeah. I, I think in the no, not here. Oh. Yeah, ranges. Okay, cool. Uh, FF15 says, "Do you think GTO was a starter membership is enough?" Um, yeah, I think it is. Like a lot of people that I've like coached still are making quite big pre-flop mistakes. And if you just get, if you just sign up to GTO Wizard for free, you obviously just get all the access to the um, pre-flop ranges, which I think um, can can really help a lot a lot of people. Uh, enough for w what? For pre-flop? I'm not sure. The question is not so specific. Yeah, so. I I don't really agree with you there. I think uh, I like the the basic. GTO Wizard thing, I, I think it just has access to the pre-solved sims. Um, and to me, I, like even if you're a beginner, I think it's very, very difficult to learn and understand concepts in there. And you also can't really play with stuff to see, you know, what if the range is different? What if, you know... Uh, I, was a, I, was, I was just talking about pre-flop charts on the, on, the free, um, on the free membership, not the basic membership. But I, I agree with you, I probably wouldn't advise getting the basic membership where there's like five different sizes and stuff right yeah yeah exactly what i'm saying so here um it is true that we mostly want to go for a shove when we bat <laughs> but it's actually a, a range track like apparently this card is quite bad for us we see hijack has a big net advantage, a big range advantage as well. So yeah, we're just really doing really, really uh, terrible here. But to be honest, I, I wouldn't read much into this sim. I think the ranges are a bit off from what we see in reality. So yeah, but okay. okay. Um, should we go next time? Well, we can check out the rest of the hand. Um, check us back onto the replay as well. Oh, I keep forgetting. <laughs> <laughs> we can see what happened. Okay, so we went for a bet. Got a call. Um, yeah, our hero likes to bluff. Well, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I don't think I mind this much. It really depends on what our turn frequency is and how often we barrel but one thing i'm thinking about here is that we don't really want to barrel stuff that doesn't have much equity we don't really have a when, lot of when when are on the replayer again oh. 
Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm, I'm thinking here on the term, we don't really barrel a lot of hands that don't have that much equity. It's obviously would like to have a non flares draw hand by the river, but I don't think we want to barrel very often those. So because of that, we might want to, to bluff some flash draws by the river, and I imagine the heart would be better than than the spades. So I don't I I think this is fine, but again, if we just barrel all of our flash draws on the river and all of our straight draws and then sorry on the turn and then just blast them off on the river it's going to be quite bad for us. Um, what do you think? I actually quite like this river bluff. Um, the reason I like it so much is because we bet so small on turn. Um, so when we when we go for that really small flop sizing, uh, villain's going to have to continue so often with two overcards. Um, then on the turn, all of those overcards pick up a draw. So he's got you know some ace-king in his range, ace-queen, king-queen. Uh, which reaches the river and then on the river we're not like massively blocking all of that range um, So I would prefer to bluff here with ace four a heart than uh, Say king queen a hearts, you know I would I would never want to bluff king queen a hearts because we're just blocking all of the folds but with ace four um, We're not blocking as many of those as I said ace queens ace kings king queens um, I don't think uh, You know villain is still gonna get here with eight nine. They're still gonna get here with nine ten uh, Are they gonna start calling down queen jack? Um, I think I think people might feel feel in a tough spot with that hand um, at ten and L. Um, but even if they call that hand, still I think it'd probably end up being overfolded with like the eight X and ten X folding. Mm. Well, I'm not sure how like, often. This, like this, it's still going to be like ace ten of spades, king ten of spades, queen ten of spades. There's going to be nine ten of every suit. There's going to be eight nine of every suit. Um, yeah, but, that's. And we're not. Blo- and we're not blocking those other hands that I mentioned. Yeah, I agree with that. It's just I'm not sure, like, if he, he shouldn't really have 8-9 here pre-flop at all. Um, and 10-9 is also, like, a very, very marginal defense against the 3 bet in these tight positions. I'm not sure, actually, how aware people at micro stakes are uh, of position and how tight you should be against the 3 bet here. And I definitely agree with you that this is a much, much better bluff than King Queen of Hearts. And if we are bluffing flash draws, this is probably the type of flash draw that we want to bluff. And yeah, maybe we don't have as many non flash draw stuff. I think King Queen of Clubs is still probably going to be a better bluff. But yeah, we can we can check that. I, I don't I, I mean, we bet one third on flop. I'm not sure it's going to be hugely relevant, but kind of feel. Okay, I take my yeah, words I, back. I, like, what is I, this? I mean, I, I mean, exactly right. If this guy's got Queen Jack off, he's got like, he's got infinite folds on river. Well, in a way, but it probably also means this guy's a recreational. Like this and is by far a fold on the flop. And I think against the recreational, I don't uh, not, really not, like not, this not, one. Not, not on the flop. Pre-flop, Sorry, you mean. pre-flop, yeah. Uh, it's a full pre-flop, it's even a marginal open, and if if I see this, um, I, I don't really, and I know the guy is a recreational, I don't really want to bluff him on this run out because they really like calling when a bunch of draws miss, so... Yeah, I agree with you if he's a recreational, for sure. Uh, Stu Unger said, how do I feel about blocking his auto full busted flush draws? Um, so if we're playing against the reg, and again, I... I just to go back to Alexandra's question, I, I don't think that even regs at, at 10 and L are going to be super aware of how often they should fold to connectors in this spot. Um, we're going to get to the river and we're going to want to have some bluffs. And like Alexandra said, maybe um, King Queen of Clubs is better here because you're just blocking so many of the Jack X that's going to call. Um, but I don't think that that's just, I don't think it's going to be enough. I think we're going to have to have more bluffs because we're going to be, um, you know, tripping off with our tens, our Jacks, our Queens, Kings, Aces. So. Uh, we're gonna need more than just four bluffs, so I think I, I think this one's okay. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, okay, should we go next hand? Do you want to check the silver on the river? Yeah, no, I think this is this is fine. Next hand, um, but yeah, main thing is just like don't do it all the time um, with every miss flush draw. All right. Um, 
Okay, before we go into the next one, I'd like to remind people that there is a discount available during the stream for Run It Once Essential, where we both coach, and yeah, there's a, bunch, a lot of good content there, a good educational content. If you want to access the offer, yeah, follow the link that Paul is going to put in the chat and use the code stream to claim this. Um, all right, we. I'm, I'm sorry, I have a light here that's probably gonna fall. Okay. <laughs> um, we open the button 2.5x and we get called by someone who's shorter stack. I mean, we can't know for sure he's a recreational, but that's often the case when you see a broken stack. And we get a board of 953. Um, against a regular, I would I would have a mixed strategy on this board. I think going three quarters or half pot both work, but definitely not a range bat. And yeah, I think against a recreational, I, I wouldn't want to range bat either. Um, this hand, I think I would mostly go for a check back, although I would probably mix in some low frequency bats. What do you think? Um, yeah, against the regular, I, I would be over betting or, or, or checking. Did you? Is your lamp falling? No. I... Oh, it sounded like. Um, yeah, on this, on this board, I would be going for either an over bet or check, and I actually think that this hand. Um, it's quite a nice hand to go for the overbet with. Um, the reason for that is you're going to get some king x and ace x that is going to fold. Um, you block his strongest hands quite well here. So you're blocking um, hands that would be continued, such as uh, queen 3, queen 5, queen 9. Um, you're also blocking some 9, 10 as well. Um, and when you go for this this like big bet, you are going to... Um, like free up some of your outs, right? So the times that you bank a 10 or a queen on the turn, um, it's very likely that your opponent isn't going to have those hands. So yeah, I would I would mostly look to go for a bet here. Uh, if I had a spade in my hand, it, it would probably be pure. Um, but even without, there's still so much better hands that we can we can fold out of villain's range. Just go when we go for the over bet, he's gonna have to fold hands as strong as you know a6, a7, a8. Um, a10 is gonna be in a real tough spot. So yeah. That's that's the way I would play against the uh, against the recreational. Um, again, I would still probably play a big bet or a check against the recreational, um, but just be a little bit more careful with my frequencies. I, in in that against the recreational, I don't think we have to bluff as much because they're gonna have a leak of overcalling. Um, so I would just skew my range so that I'm betting more often with value hands than bluffs. Yeah, I think uh, I think those are valid points. I personally don't. I mean, I, I personally use those over bad strategies on boards that are a bit more connected towards the high cards, um, and I like sizing down a bit on these ones. That's because personally, I think most people don't find enough defense and enough check raises, and I think a smaller sizing kind of exploits that a little bit more. But yeah. Do you, do, you, do you think when you go for the smaller size in 5x or 3x call? Yeah, of course. Yeah, Yeah. see, that's where I think the overbet might perform better because when we overbet, they're still going to have to defend 3x and 5x on this board. And against an overbet, I think I think even, I, I think even you know, station type of recreationals get quite scared with, with 3x and 5x. So. Mm, do you? I think they are actually going to be quite overcalled. Maybe, maybe. Well, I mean, they have to continue, I think, probably all of the 5x and 3x on this board versus an overbet. So, um, yeah, maybe they hit, they're hitting their frequencies, but I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I, I think both strategies are definitely valid. I mean, you know, which one is high revealing practice would basically depend on villain's profile and what's the mistakes that he's making. Like, or if, yeah, if, you, sure. if you're playing against someone who's just, let's say he's over bluffing the turn by probing by a lot, then you definitely want to have way more checkbacks and, you know, exploit that. If you play against someone who never ever check raises the flop, then you probably want to range but small. Um, 
but yeah, it's it's just important to you know construct your range well for the strategy that you're choosing, and you know just know how to play it more than what sizing you choose. I I would say. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, Dean C said, if I had a spade, would I bet more often? And yeah, for sure. If I had a spade, then I just have extra equity, so um, I, I would personally be better more often with that hand. Um, FF15 says, asked if the overbet is based on exploit or GTO. Um, yeah, it's based on um, GTO. So, for instance, hands like tens and jacks and ace nine really want to start piling in as much money as they can. Um, again, if you look at this on GTO Wizards, I'm not sure the first strategy you'd pick would be an overbet, but overbet is is a, is a GTO strategy, is, is valid. Mm -hmm. And um, Tiny Boost said, I use one third to simplify my strategy here. Um, so this is uh, Tiny Boost, this is his hands. Oh, all right. Um, yeah, I think my one third is fine. It's Oh, oh, unless you face an aggressive player, because if you face an aggressive player and he's aware of what's going on, he's probably going to run you over if you just, especially if you range bet one third here. Yeah, yeah. Um, one, one, thing, one thing I would just say to you guys in the chat, it, when me and Alexander are <coughs> using the, the, big, the big size in our check, um, of course, you can simplify your strategy to one third, but I, I'm not sure how big of a mistake villains make against that compared to when you use the big size in, you're going to have to check back with a bunch of weak 9x, 5x, and 3x. And a, a, a big mistake of recreational players is that they way over probe turns. Um, so you're just going to have a lot of natural defense on turns if, you, if you're checking back a lot, of, um, a lot of pairs here, which I think is, is the difference here, right? Is that like if we always range bet, we never give them the opportunity to just put in money on the turn, potentially for big sizes with really weak hands. What do you think, Alex? Yeah, yeah, I can, like, I, I I do think it depends on the player, um, and as I said, if you're against someone who's aggressive and over probes turns, which is actually most recreationals, because the ranges are going to be so wide, it's going to be difficult for them to control their frequencies, so, yeah, maybe against that, that those kind of recreationals, I would probably like patting this hand a bit more, because it will have a tough time defending on the turn, but I would definitely not range bet, uh, because I want to, you know, exploit the mistakes they are making, and as Paul said, have natural defense on, on turns, so I can let them put money into the pot with a too weak of a range. Um, and in regards to, you know, how many mistakes people are making against the one-third strategy, especially regulars, um, I think they're actually going to do a bunch of mistakes because I assume if we range about these for one third, they're probably supposed to check raise somewhere around 25, maybe even 30% of the times. I think that's really far from reality, but I still don't think it's going to be the best strategy to implement, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, Stuanga Stu asked, are recreationals in elastic to bet size in? Uh, yeah, completely. Um, you, you'll find recreational is just calling calling on this flop for this the same sort of range probably from uh seventy five percent to an over bet I would imagine. Um uh, yeah I agree with that but what I would actually add to that is that not in every spot they are completely inelastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here I think they are gonna like obviously if we bet uh, one fifty percent they're not going to call the same range as against one third but they would probably still yeah. not be elastic enough. Um, but on turns, for example, they are quite elastic, so they, they tend to massively overfold to overbats on the turn, that's at least what you see in the data, that's also because they overcall flops, um, but they do tend to overcall to like 50% or 30% bats on the turn at least, and reverse, they become a bit more elastic. Yeah, same as in anything in poker, it'll always depend on the situation. Yeah, of course. Um, okay, we get quite a nice turn. I think I would go for an overbet here, even against the recreational. Um, yeah, yeah, I think I would just pretty much always use an overbet. And this hand, I think I would all, all, also continue quite often. Actually, um, maybe against the regular, there, there are there are reasons to go a bit smaller and be able to steal value by something like 9x. Um, 
If we bet big around the flop, though, he's not. He he won't really have many jack x. So like, let's say we pot the flop or go three quarters. I think then we can probably still pot the turn and continue betting a lot of our nine x. Here, yeah, I I guess those are two valid strategies. You know, go for an over bet and maybe our value threshold would be like a very good nine x or jack x. Or maybe like a three quarters of a pot and be able to value bet a lot of our 9x. What, what do you think? I mean, this is assuming we're playing against the reg. Yeah, against the reg, um, I completely agree with you in that if we go for a pot size bet, uh, maybe slightly smaller or, or slightly larger, um, they're going to have to fold almost all of their jack x, especially on this jack of hearts turn. Um, I think that they don't really have any jack x left in their range that isn't two pair um and so what you probably will see the solver doing at a decent frequency will be um continuing as alex said for maybe 75 to a pot size bet and the reason for that is like where we can size down is because we're going to be able to continue value betting all of our our strongest 9x and continuing to bet jack x that we bet on the flop but also because out of position is now just going to really suffer against the 75 percent because most of their range is going to be as we said um you know weaker portions of 9x 5x and 3x and, and pocket pairs so um that that range is going to suffer versus 75 percent as as well as you know using pot or an over bet so yeah um if we use the bigger size on flop I'd, I'd definitely be continuing um and, and probably using that 75 to a pot size when we go for the range bet, though, um, this is this is why I don't like playing range bets on these boards, right? Because like now it's a lot less identifiable what his range looks like, you know. Like I'm not sure how much like Jack X this this guy has. Um, obviously, he has a, every Jack X of spades, but like, does he does he float? I mean, he probably floats with his, his Jack Ten, Queen Jack, King Jack at, at decent frequency. So um, it's not as great of a turn, but obviously for our hand. Um, we can definitely still go for an overbet here. And I think I think after betting so small on flop, I would probably just go for an overbet here. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Okay, let's see what our hero does. And I think after this end, we can probably wrap it up. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. Um, it was for the three quarters, which... Um... Yeah, I think it's good if you're aware of how thing you can go. I think like for this side you can definitely bet nine x, even even if we think he has quite some jack x in his range. Like we do too, and he also he's also gonna have a bunch of draws and five x and three x and ace highs and stuff like uh, I don't know maybe ten eight or whatnot. So yeah, I think this is fine, but we need we need to be aware that we can also value bet really thinly. Do you want to add anything on here? No, no, I, I agree. Just, yeah, when we go for this size and make sure we're doing it with hands like Queen 9 and stuff. Yeah, I think here we just call. Um, I think the, like, it's not a, a great spot because we can, you know, hit our outs and still lose on the river especially if it didn't improves him to flash but I, I think with the odds I, I don't think I would fold this hand here um, yeah and I also think this is going to be really really under bluffed even by recreationals I don't think like this spot is going to be over bluffed so yeah I don't really see what shove accomplishes but yeah, especially against the recreational, they might tend to overplay their hands when we hit. So I think the odds are good, um, considering the implied odds as well. Yeah, this should probably always be a call. I wouldn't do anything else. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, I'm always calling. Yeah, for sure. This there's still going to be, as you said, you know, a bunch of hands in the range that are just worse than ours. Um, like weaker flush draws, they're going to have some six, seven, or seven, eight. Uh, maybe some 10 as you mentioned as well. So, um, yeah, I'd always be calling. Yeah, I agree. And now he goes for a check. Yeah, I think I would always bluff this hand. Um, I think there's so many, like, pair plus draws and, I don't know, stuff like, mm, I don't know, like, what a recreational could check race here. I think, 
I think this guy is a recreational by now, like just a small race size on the turn and then him being a broken stack. Uh, yeah, I assume he's going to be a recreational and I like this bluff less against the recreational to be honest, but I still think there's enough hands that he could fold and what like it, more, more important than that, I really doubt the a rack or a rag is going to check raise the turn very often and now check when they hit a flush. So and we also have no showdown value and he could just show up here with like five four of clubs for whatever reason. Um so yeah, I think I think I would um fire this one. What do you think? Yeah, I agree. Just on that uh, last um, last sentence you said mostly as well, um, that against the recreational, they can just turn up with, like, as you said, 4-5 or 5-6 for absolutely no reason. Um, and, yeah, I think there's just potentially a lot of, like, hands in this range that, that we can get to fold out. Um, yeah, I, I especially like a, a bluff here against the recreational. Yeah, yeah, I think this is fine. I like this. Yeah, I mean, whatever. Give the guy his money. And I, I, I kind of have, like, the only reason I have a bit of second thoughts on this is because I still think the turn is not going to be... Uh, uh you... What? Uh, maybe it was my internet. Uh, I, maybe my internet went a little bit, then I couldn't hear you. You said you had second thoughts? Yeah, I had second thoughts because I still think the turn is not going to be over bluffed. So I think even though, yes, he might show up with some random hands, random hands sometimes, I think it's mostly going to be hands like this, which recreationals do have a hard time folding. I think they are going to be quite scared on the river when a flush hits to keep batting with a set or two pairs. But I also think he would never fold that. So, like, what I'm trying to say is this, I don't think this is, like, the best spot to bluff and we should just fire. But, like, this particular hand, not having any kind of uh, of showdown value, also blocking a flash or, yeah, I think it's, I think it's good to bluff. Um, yeah, I think it'd be, yeah, yeah, I was just gonna say, I think it'd be obviously much worse if we had a spade in our hand. Um, like the one benefit, one benefit we have here is like we don't really want a ten, but having a ten of hearts is quite nice. Um, just because obviously, if uh, he, he was check raising turn with 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 the ten of hearts in his hands, it's probably more likely he's gonna have a flush. And um, yeah, we wouldn't, wouldn't expect him to start checking out on the river. Um, yeah, I mean, he just has a strong hand in the end. Yeah. Yeah, maybe if he has like ace jack without the ace of hearts, he could find the fold sometimes. I wouldn't be super surprised. Yeah, I, I, I would, I would, I think that would probably end up happening as well. I think a recreational here sees the ace of hearts and just feels like he can never fold it. Right, exactly. Okay, well, I guess we can wrap this session up. It's been one hour, right? So, yeah. yeah. Um, thanks everyone for joining. If you want to connect with us and, you know, join more sessions like this, we run weekly free ones on our Discord. You can find that in the chat. And don't forget that during the stream and a little bit of time after the stream, you can get 50% off your Run It Once Essential subscription. So make sure you claim your offer. There's also more in-depth videos that we do there so yeah make sure you don't miss those yeah just want to say uh thanks for tiny for supplying the hands as well um everyone's improving you know you're gonna see these are obviously not all gonna be the greatest hands because we picked them for review right so like yeah um i know he's, he's doing quite well in in his games at the moment so yeah thanks for supplying some hands and thanks everyone for joining yeah and also like this is this is quite important to be able to like be vulnerable in a way and share the hands that you didn't play well and not you know just share hands to hear ah you played this great ah congratulations because that's not the way you're gonna going to improve so yeah yeah exactly okay bye everyone good luck